In this video, we're going to derive the total number of collisions that occur between particles and a gas in a given unit of volume in a given unit of time. So this total collision rate, called ZAA, which we're defined, it was the collision frequency between all of the A particles with each other per unit volume. And of course, since it's a frequency, it is per unit time as well. So this quantity ZAA, what is this going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be equal to the collision frequency for a single particle of A, so the number of collisions that uh, particle A undergoes, times the density, which tells you the number of particles uh, per unit volume. So there are, there are going to be ZA particles, there are going to be ZA collisions uh, for the N particles in that unit of volume. But we also want to account for another factor, which is the fact that if you have particle 1 collide with particle 2, then you only want to count this collision once. You don't want to count the collision for particle 1 and for particle 2 as well. So that collision only counts once. So these are both A particles. And this is a situation called double counting. So in order to avoid double counting, it's pretty simple when we just have one type of particle going on. We just include a factor of 1 half. So we have the total collisions for each of them, but we just divide by 1 half so that it only counts once for each particle. OK, so we have our total collision frequency here defined in terms of these quantities. So we calculated this quantity in the previous video. So we can continue on with that. We have ZAA is going to be equal to, so we're going to have 1 half. And then there's going to be the cross-sectional area of our cylinder, which encompasses our particle, which is its diameter squared times pi. Notice that it's the diameter, not radius, because it's the, it's the uh, cross-sectional area of two, twice the uh, diameter of the particle. All right, so it's our cross-sectional area of the particle times the average velocity of the particles relative to one another times, and there's a factor of, a densi of density here, but there's another factor of density here, so this becomes density squared. Okay, and as we saw in the previous video, this relative velocity to one another is equal to the average velocity of the particles times uh, one over the square root of two or times the square root of 2. And so that is going to be 1 half sigma u times square root of 2 times rho squared. This square root of 2 here is going to partially cancel with this 2 on the bottom in the following way. So if you have a square root of 2 on top, that cancels out and makes that a square root on the bottom. So then what we're going to have is our total collision frequency between molecules of the same type is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 times our effective area of the molecule, its cross-sectional area, times density squared times average velocity of the particles. So this is going to be collisions between molecules of the same type. We could similarly define a quantity called ZAB which defines the collision frequency between different kinds of particles. So collision frequency between A and B particles. So what would we replace in this derivation here in order to calculate ZAB? So ZAB, <coughs> um, what we're going to lose is we're not going to have this factor of of the relative mass to each other. Um, we're not going to have this factor of double counting. And instead of uh, density here, um, we're going to have one of these is going to be the density of A and one of them is going to be the density of B. So effectively what you get at the end is you have cross-sectional area between A and B times density of A times density of B times the relative velocity of A and B to one another. 
So if you're talking about um, specific types of gas particles, this cross-sectional area is slightly different than the one we defined in the previous video. So that's going to be pi times, then you're going to take the average of the diameter of particle A and particle B and square that. For the relative velocity to one another, that ends up being the same. That's going to be 8 kT over, sorry, pi, 8 kT over pi times reduced mass. But we have to remember now that the reduced mass is not just going to be m over 2. The reduced mass is going to be whatever it comes out to be due to the relative masses of the particles, which is just the product of the particles' masses divided by their sum. So if you, for example, take and uh, substitute in some typical values here uh, for N2 gas, you can get kind of what the van der Waals radius of nitrogen gas is and then stick in that value for your cross-sectional area. Density would be the density of the ideal gas as we discussed in the previous video. Average velocity would be the average velocity of N2 gas at, at uh, 298 Kelvin. So those are all things that we've discussed how to calculate but what you'll find is that if you calculate the total collision rate for N2 in its standard state, so that'll be at 298 Kelvin and at a pressure of one bar, the total collision, freq the total collision rate per unit volume is going to be about 9, so 8.9 times 10 to the 28th per milliliter per second. So if you, aver if you imagine a milliliter right now, that's a, that's a cubic centimeter, so either one milliliter of air or one cubic centimeter of air, whichever helps you visualize it better. And that cubic centimeter of air right now, every second there's about 10 to the 28th collisions occurring, well closer to 10 to the 29th collisions occur occurring. But there are a ton of a ton a ton of collisions occurring every second within those gas molecules. So when we're talking about kinetics and you're picturing collisions between molecules, just notice the enormity here of just how many collisions there are occurring at all times. And this is just a truly enormous number and how extremely fast and extremely numerous these collisions are uh, under gases in standard conditions.